Hey everybody, it's First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Benavich. Quick update on our subtropical tropical disturbance. You probably heard a lot about this. I've been posting about it as well. And here's the thing. First of all, this is nothing to worry about, but it's a big deal because it's the first possible name system of the season. So, you know, people are going to talk about it. This happens every single season. So here's our area of concern. There's a 70% chance of tropical and subtropical development. Now, and a lot of folks get caught up in what the heck is subtropical? The thing you need to know about subtropical and tropical, subtropical systems are like any other low pressure system. They have some characteristics of a regular low pressure system that would pass over us every couple of days, bringing us rain or severe weather. And it also has some characteristics of a tropical system. So it's a hybrid system. Now, we didn't always name these, not until it was probably in the 70s or 80s, they started designating these with numbers, and then they started using the name from the hurricane list. So this is a relatively new thing to name them. They've always been around, but we started naming them and they come from the hurricane list. So this does inflate the numbers of storms in a season um, just because we've changed the way we've named them. But the thing is, it's basically a tropical system with, you know, kind of subtropical characteristics. It's kind of a hybrid, if you will. So there it is. That's the area we're watching. Let me show you where it is right now because we can actually see something for the first time in a couple days. We've been talking about it. There's a big explosion of showers and thunderstorms near the Florida Keys, and they're getting some gusty winds down there right now. I'm going to pause this and kind of show you. You can see down in southern Florida, we're getting 45, 50 mile an hour winds uh, with some pretty good rain, and there's a little swirl down there. So there is a low pressure system developing, and what's going to happen is it's going to move into the northern Bahamas, and this is probably where it's going to develop over the next 24 hours. There's about a 20 or 30 percent chance this happens today or tomorrow, maybe a 40 percent chance on Saturday, but a, but a 70, 80 percent chance this happens sometime within the next five days. So where does it go from here? That's a really good question. Let's look at the water vapor loop. I love looking at this. It shows you the steering currents because one of the things you can see, here's our disturbance down there. We've got a trough here, big storms in the Midwest, another big severe weather day trough here it's kind of in no man's land here it can't go to the west it really can't go to the east its only avenue is up in here and once it gets here it's kind of going to get stuck because there's not really strong steering current so good news for us it's not heading our way bad news it's going to be out there for a while it's not in a big hurry <clears throat> to actually move so let's look at some of the probabilities of development and you can kind of see the movement off to the northeast that's that's the probabilities of a tropical storm Here's the probabilities of a tropical depression, much higher. Um, here's the probabilities of a hurricane, zero. <laughs> so you can see there's, you know, the, the European ensembles, almost no chance of a tropical, uh, a, a hurricane. It's a tropical depression or, or subtropical storm. So there's the movement. You can see the primary movements off to the north and east. Really good tool here is, is from um, Alan Brammer. He shows kind of swaths. Uh, cones basically based on the same model data. And you can see the last three runs all have it going northeast and then kind of meander out here. And this is what I'm talking about. Once this thing gets out here, it could do a loop to loop and then curve up here. It's not going to be in a big hurry to move, but it's going to be off the east coast for the next couple of days. This is 168 hours. Let's look at the track density and you can see everything is offshore. This thing in the Gulf is interesting. That's just a old a mesoscale complex. So I think the models are picking on that. But you can see really high probabilities here of development, 75, 80%. Let's look at all the tracks, and you can see they're all offshore. I don't know what's going on with this thing. That's from that thing in the Gulf. But all offshore. Notice they're also red. You can't see them. I'm going to move my head here. But you can see the numbers. Uh, those are tropical storm force winds at, at 34 knots. Um, nothing really gets to, you know, or tropical depression, nothing really gets up there around hurricane force except for out here long range and that's probably extra tropical so you can see weak system everything's offshore that's why this is really nothing to worry about let me show you what's going on with this pattern here so we'll start today this is what we call the 500 millibar chart kind of shows where there's disturbances so the brighter the colors the more spin there is in the mid levels of the atmosphere basically where we have storm systems so if i put this into motion i'm going to stop this uh, later tonight you can see our typical storm systems moving across the country. Here's our thing over the over the uh, Florida Keys or the Florida Straits. Starts pushing northeast. You can see it getting organized in the Bahamas. This is really early Saturday morning. Um, also notice we've got two potent um, vorticity maximums coming through the middle of the country. And here's your flow. You know, you've got the jet stream up here. 
you've got a little dip right here and then there's our ridge where it's sitting right there and another dip over here in the northern Atlantic so it's sitting in that kind of spot in no man's land it's not being steered by the jet stream it's just kind of sitting down there doing its thing let's go into motion you can see it's sitting off the southeast coast kicking up some swells producing some rip currents um, staying just off the outer banks probably some good wave action maybe even some overwash out there so just a heads up but you can see with this big you know trough coming in from the west we've got a trough right here ridge of high pressure here this thing is all pushing it east so it, it's got to go this thing is here now there's a chance it gets absorbed back in here but that's very small right now i doubt that's going to happen it's probably going to get kicked out as you can see right there see it get kicked out to the east so it starts moving away and this thing becomes our bigger weather maker uh, middle of next week. This is why it gets cold. This is going to become a cutoff low or an upper low and watch this thing sit over us. This is to me the most fascinating thing about the long range is this thing, not our little subtropical sim. This upper low starts getting cut off. What happens is the jet stream starts doing this and it normally would buckle like this but what happens is just like a river or stream, the stream says, you know, it's too hard to dip down there. I'm just going to go and cut across and it leaves this thing behind and watch it kind of gets stuck down there and it gets detached from the upper level flow and it sits over the mid-atlantic uh for the most of next week so if you want something to talk about i think it's less about this subtropical thing but and this uh upper level system next week this will be really interesting that could give us cool wet weather and kind of cancel our heat wave for a little bit until it moves out so that'll be an interesting thing to watch but as you can see overall there's very little to worry about especially when you look at the cones here everything is showing this thing staying offshore so it's a talker it's the first name storm of the season possibly it would become arthur but here's the thing there's no it's not heading towards the carolinas it's not really heading towards the east coast it is going to produce swells waves and rip currents that's the big story with potentially arbor of course i'll have updates throughout the day tonight and over the next couple of days hope you have a great weekend get ready the heat is cranking up for us we're going to see temperatures in the mid to upper 80s this weekend